G'day, uh, Alistair Christie here from LearnDelphi.tv, and I first need to say happy birthday, Delphi. It is uh, February 14th, 2025. Um, Delphi was released on the 14th of February in 1995, so this marks Delphi's 30th birthday. Uh, I get to celebrate it a bit earlier than most of the world because I'm here in New Zealand, so uh, we sort of get the, uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the first time zones. Now, um, what I'm going to do is we're going to build a very simple application, um, SQLite application. We'll start by creating a Windows VCL application. And just on the form, I'm going to add a FT connection. Uh, and the, the name FT connection one is just fine for our purposes. And let's double click and we'll just create a very simple uh, SQLite connection. We'll make one up. So our driver ID is, uh, let's try and get it right, SQLite. Sorry, I haven't rehearsed this or anything, so this is very uh, basic. Uh, database, temp uh, ydv.sqlite. And I think that is everything that we need. And if I go test, and it's created this database. So this is this, there was no file there previously. It's automated for This is all you need to do to, do to create a database in um, SQLite with Delphi. It's about as simple as it gets. Now, the other things that are quite helpful is to turn the locking mode to, to normal. Uh, if it's exclusive, it assumes that only one application has access to the database, which is fine if it's just your application, but if it's your application and Delphi, uh, you're going to run into problems. And journaling, uh, I think, I'm um, not actually sure what the best setting is, but I know uh, this WAL is um, pretty good. And we're just going to leave everything else and go OK. Now, oh, actually, Let's bring up the SQL script window. Now, I actually want to create uh, a table. Now, I have this question on Stack Overflow, and this is what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to create this very simple table, and it's going to have two records in it, and we're going to perform two different select statements. And one of them is going to cause us a problem. So, I'm going to copy that and come back to Delphi and go play. Oh, I need to turn off the password prompt, but that's okay. So, we've uh, added some records. Six star from T1. And we can see we have our various, our very simple columns A and B. Now, the problem, okay, let's, let's go okay to that and add an FD query. Now, I don't want to call it anything. Um, that that pop-up is from uh, CNPAC, by the way. If I, uh, which I quite like uh, because uh, it defaults, you know, the extension to QRY and I might call it um, T1. And so we want to select, let's go back to our thing. This query is fine. So add that, execute it, I need to disable that. We get one and null. So basically we're saying uh, if B is greater than zero, we can do A divided by B, otherwise do null. And so if, if B is zero, we can't divide by zero, so we use null instead. Perfectly reasonable um, calculation. And that, and that query is fine. I have no problems with that, except let's go into our fields and go add all fields, and we have a C, and we can, we can say it's an integer field, that's fine, okay. Maybe it should be a float field or something um, potentially change that. But now this is where the problem arises. If I go back in here 
and I reverse the direction. I can just remove descending, for instance, and go, okay, everything looks fine. But if I open this query, and hopefully, there we go, we get a tight mismatch. It's expecting a large integer, but is actually a wide string. And if we have a look at that, uh, in fact, I'm going to load up Heidi. That's probably a little bit of an old version, but that's all right. So let's go new T1. And we want it to be, yeah, I highly recommend Heidi SQL. It's brilliant. Um, and I'll be discussing it a bit more probably in a later video. But we're just going to create uh, backslash, was it my DD? All right, and is it going to go to temp? Yes, my DB does do like that. That's cool. And we can save that. Open. Select start from E1. And run that. Okay, so there's, that's all fine. The Everything's in blue, indicating some sort of number. So it's a, you know, a integer or a float. Um, let's grab this query. And paste it back into Heidi. And uh, I'm going to start with that again first. And we see it's in blue. So we've got a, it's a number. Uh, and, but if I remove that, or make, make it ascending, you'll see the color's changed. It's now, it now thinks it's a string. Um, we could go, uh, of that expression. Run that, and we see we've got a null and an integer. And what effectively is happening is, I, I think, I'm not entirely certain, but I think um, both FireDAC and Heidi look at this first record and see that it's a null and say, well, um, there's actually no type on. So SQLite is kind of unusual in that it, the, the, the types on it are really only suggestions. Um, there are a few fundamental types like uh, a string or t uh, text, um, integer and float, and there's a, a couple of others, um, but they're, they're really basic. Uh, dates, for instance, are stored as strings. Um, but anyway, so it, the, the, the thing is, how do we fix this? Now, there is actually, uh, and this, on this question, this, uh, let's go back to the question, a number of suggestions like you can cast. So I could try and cast, um, uh, if I remember how the syntax, cast um, as um, real, for instance, but it still doesn't work. So we check 1.0 here, but it's still a string field. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's not that. I don't think SQLite comes back and says, this is a particular type. Now to solve this, um, there, there's no, no way of doing it in SQLite as far as I can tell. The, just, just because the way the, 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 the typing works, um, the, it's, it's, it, you can't really think of SQLite as a big database. It's, it's not SQL Server or um, Postgres, MariaDB, MySQL, um, Interbase, or whatever. It, it, it's uh, designed for high performance and small devices. And so there's a whole bunch of um, assumptions it's making uh, and shortcuts to, to make it highly performant on a phone or even a, a far more low-powered device. And so what we need to do is we need to tell SQLite that, or at least tell FireDAC, that the type, the field type, is an integer. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in quotes, like so, and hopefully it comes back. Uh, and we should be able to go OK and set it to true. 
<laughs> okay, it's a it's expecting an integer as a large, a large integer. Um, let's let's just go into here uh, and say large into field plus two pair. And before I forget, I'm going to say log and prompt. We don't need it. And I compile it, correct the definition, and fingers crossed. There we go. Active. Yeah. So that's one way of, uh, and and this 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 is find act. This is not SQLite. Um, so if I copy and paste that into Heidi, for instance, and go, <laughs> our column name is now C colon colon int, which is probably uh, going to be a right pain uh, if you were going, you know, select that column name. But anyway, so this is, this is um, specifically to FireDAC. So there is another solution. And that is, I can go onto the FD connection or the query. Um, what I'll do is go into the connection editor. There's, there's a couple of places you can edit this. Uh, in options, there is data mapping rules. And I can say, let's make it a bit bigger. Um, add a rule, uh, delete rule. Can we edit this one? Okay. So the source data type, I don't care about. Uh, but the result is going to be a, I'm going to say an int32. And the name mask is the C which is the, the name, our field name. So there's a whole bunch of things you can, you can fiddle with in here, but like we can only, um, convert it if it's a wide string, for instance. Um, so that if we already had an integer, it was already cast as an integer rather than a, or a float or something like that, we might not want to recast it as an integer. But anyway, you get okay to that. And the thing you need to remember is uh, if it's been connected, um, the the those those settings only get reset when it's connected. So if it's already connected, uh, then this won't work. And if I go, ex oh, okay, I guess it's case sensitive. So uh, options, main mask, and C. And connected is false. Okay, that's cool. And so active. Oh, really? There we go. Let's turn that off. Okay, so obviously I'm doing something wrong. Our target, name mask. Uh, I can just go to it should take every every field. Okay, that is not connected. So the other place you can edit this, I'm going to change this back to C. So I can say, um, for instance, I could say everything that ends in um, everything that ends in percent. I want to make that an integer or a float or something like that, or kg or lb for pounds or something like that. So that's it, that. And oh, thank you, Delphi. Uh, in the format options, I think, mapping rules. Here we go. We can change it here as well. At least. Let's do it on the connection. Okay. I'm going to add one. Our source is, you know, our target is an integer. Okay, int32. Name is anything that is, well, is a C. Okay. This is not currently connected, so that worked. Okay. 
I have had bad experience um, editing this. So maybe um, maybe that's best uh, ignored. Um, so that is, you can do it on the connection. And we can also, in the format options in, in, for the query, we can do it on an individual query. And we can have a, our own mapping rules. So that is what I uh, wanted to cover. Um, so uh, thank you, Delphi, for having a solution to this, or FireDAC at least. Um, FireDAC is very awesome. Um, I very much encourage you to use it. Um, likewise with uh, Heidi SQL, I've used it quite a lot. You can make to a lot of databases. It's written in Delphi. Um, and it's, it's fairly easy to use and has lots of stuff that uh, make your life much easier. So thanks for watching. I'm Alistair Christie. I might edit this a little bit, um, but we'll see. Uh, do check out my books, Code Fast and in Delphi and Code Better in Delphi, both available on my website, learndelphi.tv, and also my videos, the Pack. I have been doing, I've ed re-edited um, building applications of the VCL part one and two, and I'm partway through part three, and I've just been tightening up the content. Uh, it's a lot better now, it flows a lot better. Uh, and they've gone from sort of more than six hours to five-ish hours. So I've effectively got rid of uh, one sixth of the <laughs> of the content. Well, there's no no. It's the the content is the same. It's just edited a lot tighter. Uh, so the information is a lot more dense. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.